Shalom, I'd like to give vow and glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakwadash, and give double honors to our apostles and elders, Great Millstone. Salutations to our sincere Akim, pushing his word out across the four corners of the world. Just a quick lesson concerning this article from ZeroHedge.com, and the title says, Peter Skiff, this everything is great attitude can't last forever. And this was published on March the 23rd, 2022. Despite rising interest rates and more hawkish talk from Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, the stock markets keep pushing upward. Everybody seems to think the Fed has things under control and everything will be just fine. In this podcast, Peter explained why this everything is great attitude will have to come to an end. And that's the exact problem with these modern Babylonians referring to these Americans, including two-thirds of our people who have a spiritual or emotional attachment to this place America, also known as spiritual Egypt. That's why I stated within the scriptures how majority of our people, they tell these false prophets or seers, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy unto us deceits. So the mass majority of these Americans, they love to be spoon-fed games, folly, lies, total BS at the end of the day. Where in this day of time, you have grown men who do not want to take heed to watching the news or just paying attention to current events because they say it's too serious now. But those are the times that we are in. And these are the times that our Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, want us as the hopeful let to be spiritually prepared for so we're supposed to be on that spiritual alert, that spiritual watch, and just be on the lookout and to observe the times that we are in, referring to these last days of Esau's rulership. So by knowing Esau's nature, beginning with the heads of them, we already know through the spirit that they are not going down without a fight. So we're supposed to be on that spiritual watch and be spiritually concentrated on the biblical prophecies. Because a good soldier or a warrior they know the strategies and the tactics that their enemies are coming with. So how much more through the spirit that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh gave us this spiritual wisdom, this spiritual insight, referring to the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we watch out for these spiritual tokens, and that let us know through the spirit how to be more spiritually prepared, like what we need to spiritually train on so we can be ready for that big game time. And that takes me to Matthew 28 and 20. This is Yahweh Shah speaking to his disciples. So he was telling them how all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth by the authority of the heavenly father, Yahweh. And a part of that power referring to Revelation, the fifth chapter, is by Yahweh Shah being worthy to open the seals of the book, referring to the understanding of the holy scriptures that he gave to his hopeful elect. So with that spiritual understanding that we have now, via that spiritual eyesalve, we are to be very observant in the times that we are in and looking forward to the signs of Yahweh Shah's second coming. So Matthew 28 and 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And that's by examining the times that we are in. And that was a commandment that Yahweh Shah gave to his disciples at that time frame. So how much more seriousness is it now in the last of the last days of Esau's rulership? And it says, And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And that end of the world is referring to the end of an age, the end of a rulership or empire. And that's referring to that we are approaching the end of the tabernacle of Edom's authority on this earth. And that's why it's stated in Ecclesiasticus 10 and 8, how the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So we are in a spiritual transition of rulership or authority or sovereignty upon this earth. As it says, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it to follow it. So Yahweh Shah told his disciples, and really he's speaking to his hopeful elect in this day of time, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And he gave that decree to his disciples or his hopeful elect to observe all things. Which takes me right to Mark 13 and 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, speaking about the second coming of Yahweh Shah. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father, referring to the heavenly Father Yahweh, Verse 33, take ye heed, watch, and pray, for ye know not when the time is. So there goes again the word watch, being concentrated on the biblical prophecies, measuring the times diligently in itself. Verse 34, for the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. So as the sincere watchman of the nation of Israel, 
we supposed to be on those spiritual towers and cautioning and warning our people the times that we are in, whether they hear or forbear. And not speaking unto our people smooth things and just things that want to make them comfortable. You're supposed to make them comfortable through the Spirit by telling them the truth of the Holy Scriptures. And that's comfort right there alone because we know that these things has to take place with Esau coming down upon us with great wrath in order to bring in Yahweh Shai's second debut on this earth. So he can redeem his hopeful elect and to judge and make war with all these other nations. Okay, so back to the article. And it says, the markets don't seem to comprehend how much has changed since the Federal Reserve embarked on its last tightening cycle. We're no longer in this world where the Fed can simply pretend that there is no inflation because inflation is so much higher now than it was at any prior point for the beginning of a tightening cycle. And the economy is also in a much more precarious situation than it typically is when the Fed is hiking rates. And the word precarious goes into dangerous, insecure, perilous. And what did it say in 2 Timothy? That it should be perilous times within these last days. And the Federal Reserve, they're all tied to the curriculum of the international bankers. Of how this is an engineered collapse and a long plan takedown of America that these different heads of Esau Edom have been talking about for centuries. So already through the spirit, you can see that this article has bones in it. Despite Jerome Powell and others claiming that the economy is strong, this is really an environment where you would typically expect the Fed to cut rates and launch a new QE going into a quantitative easing program to stop the economy from sliding into a recession. But the Fed has an inflation problem that it can no longer ignore. It can't pretend inflation is transitory and that it will go away on its own. They now have to actively engage in doing something about it. And so that's one of the reasons that this cycle is going to be very different from the ones that preceded it. And it's going to end very differently. And the reason why it's going to end very differently because this time frame, they're going to crash this American dollar, this petrol dollar. It's going to be a total financial collapse and it's going to transition into a digital currency system. And like I stated in another video, all these lesser luminaries pursuing to these different presidents, these governors, these senators, these mayors, these different politicians and activists, they have all been vocalizing about this NWO agenda. And this has been going on for centuries. So that's pretty much it on me reading this article because for the most part, it really goes into how they're trying to come up with financial marketing tactics to get this economy back on right. And what really caught my eye through the spirit on this article was his title, how the mindset of the mass majority of these Americans, this everything is great attitude, is not gonna last forever. And no matter what of your plans or goals or your strategies, you cannot restore America because it's already written for it to be taken down in this type of fashion. And that takes me right to Jeremiah 51 and 8. Babylon, referring to America, is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her, take bond for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. But we already know through the spirit that she's not going to be healed. Because referring to Isaiah 46 and 10, it says, Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things are not yet done, saying, My counsel should stand. So a part of Heavenly Father's counsel through His Son, Yahweh Shai, is fulfilling biblical prophecies. And what's the major biblical prophecy? Our Redeemer or Savior, Yahweh Shah is coming back and he's going to destroy America known as Babylon the Great. And he's going to redeem his hopefully elect and destroy two thirds of our people within this setup and also these other nations. So it says, my counsel should stand and I will do all my pleasure. And that's by fulfilling his word, allowing these prophecies to come into fruition. And we are seeing these spiritual tokens more and more within these last days. So if it's a part of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh pleasure, as of us, the hope we let those ambassadors of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh it's a part of our pleasure as well, seeing these things come to pass. And there's definitely nothing wrong rejoicing at the downfall of your enemies. So jumping back to Jeremiah 51 and 8, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her, take balm for her pain, if so be, she may be healed. And as you know, a balm is like a healing ointment or agent. So all these modern Babylonians having that wishful thinking, hoping things to get back to normal or return back to pre-pandemic days who are not spiritually watching and not observing the times we are in, they're coming up with all these strategic ways on trying to restore and heal America. But it's a part of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's counsel to take this place America down. 
So Babylon is suddenly falling. And as it says in Isaiah 24 and 10, the city of confusion is broken down. So it's being broken down so much more on an economic perspective. With inflation of food, gas, household items, and pretty soon it's gonna turn into hyperinflation. Then on top of that, the US national debt is over $30 trillion. And that's just what we can see. So how much more in actuality? And that's when we are really going to see it turn up to the mass of the uproars of the people. Verse nine, we will have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. And again, the reason why, because it's a divine order for this place of America to be taken down. So it says, we will have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country. And that's going into how these heathen nations within America, they're going to go back to their homelands. For her judgment reaching unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. And like how I always say through the spirit, Yahweh Bashim al Shah or allowing America to have a free for all in wickedness. And that's why you're seeing more and more within these last days, things are becoming more defiled, more stranger, more treacherous, and just more evil and wicked. So the Heavenly Father can be totally justified by sending back Yahweh Shah to totally annihilate this place, America, along with the rulers of this place. That's why it says he's going to enter into the house of the thief. So like that article we just read earlier, I was going into the title that everything is great attitude cannot last forever. And that takes me to the book of Ecclesiastes 12 and 3. In the day when the keepers of the house should tremble and the strong men should bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out the windows be darkened. And that goes into two thirds of our people and these other nations who have a spiritual or emotional attachment to this place, America. That wishful thinking. And that's by being all optimistic and hoping for a better outcome. But according to prophecy, it says, and those that look out the windows be darkened. And that word darkened goes into dim, gloomy, and unhappy. And that's that vibration that Yahweh Bashim al is bringing upon the burden of Egypt. And like how I stated at the beginning of this lesson, how these Americans love to be spoon-fed nothing but lies, madness, folly, and the list goes on. So by these government officials telling these people how everything is under control, everything will be just fine, that's not accurate according to the Holy Scriptures. But the mass majority of our people, they are not spiritual enough and not spiritually observing their enemies. And they don't even know that Esau Edom is their enemy according to the Scriptures. So by him telling you that everything is going to be great and how everything is under control, that's when we as an Israelite are supposed to be more observant and vigilant. And that takes me to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3. For when they should say peace and safety, then sudden destruction coming upon them. And the scriptures goes into how the proud waters are going to come. How the enemy is going to come down as a flood. In the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, it goes into how the dragon was rough with the woman, referring to the nation of Israel. So the heads of Esau, Edom knows about this blessing. And that spirit of Esau, as it says in the book of Genesis, the days of my father are at hand, then I will slay my brother Jacob. So that spirit of Esau back in the book of Genesis is going to be heavy upon these heads of Esau Edom in these latter days because they want that spiritual blessing back. So for when they should say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them, upon two thirds of our people who are spiritually connected to this place that walk down to Egypt, that trust in the strength of Pharaoh, trust in the shadow of Egypt. And that trust that they are putting their energy into, they're going to realize very soon that they have made a covenant with death. And it says, as travail upon a woman with child, and they should not escape. So two thirds of our people who have their emotional attachment to this place, they're not going to escape all the hell that Yahweh Bashim al Shah is going to place upon them because they put their trust in Pharaoh instead of Yahweh Bashim al Shah. So that provokes Yahweh Bashim al Shah to more anger. Verse 4, but ye brethren, referring to the hopeful elect, those spiritual watchmen, are not in darkness, going to that gross darkness, that that day shall overtake you as a thief. And why so? Verse 5, ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So we as the hopeful elect, we have that illuminated light, and that's referring to the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we can be able to spiritually see the times that we are in. But it's not going to be a good case to mass majority of our people who put their trust into spiritual Egypt. 
And this is Jeremiah 8 and 7. Yea, the stork in the heaven nor her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. And these are birds that are spiritual enough to know when they see that storm coming, they will depart from that region and migrate to a better land for safety and shelter. But two thirds of our people, they do not have that spiritual eyesight, so therefore they are still in that gross darkness. So by default, they are not measuring the times diligently in itself. And it says, but my people know not the judgment of Yahweh Bashim Shai. And a part of Yahweh Bashim Shai's judgment, which goes into which goes into his decision making within the spiritual realm, is to put that vibration upon his vessel of dishonor, Esau Edom, or Assyria, the rod of my anger, the staff in their hand is my indignation. And with that rod of anger, he's going to come down on mass majority of our people who think everything is great. Everything will be under control within America known as Babylon the Great. So that concludes the lesson. Hopefully you all were edified through the spirit. As it says, this everything is great attitude can't last forever. So I brought this out. Y'all was edified. Y'all stay strong. Keep pushing forward. Shalom.